something else, uh, which, which in a way uh, <clears throat> has to, it, it has a connection to change. Amen. Mm -hmm. So I want to welcome all of you, those um, in, 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 um, in, 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 a, in, in a, on the internet, I want to welcome all of you this morning. Amen. Father, we thank you. Speak. Give us ears to hear and a heart to believe. Give us the will to do. Help us know that we're not going to be hearers of your word. Help us to be excited doers in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Um, for those who are writing, I, what, what I want to minister on today is, is your divine assignment. Say my divine assignment. Divine assignment. Say my divine assignment. Divine assignment. You see in, 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 the, in the text, in our passages that was read, that were read, um, the first one in John chapter 9, verse 4, um, Jesus speaking and said, I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. For the night cometh with no making work. For the night cometh. Now, when, when, you, when you read the text, you might think that they're talking about, you know, 8.45, 9 o'clock, 12 midnight. No, 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 that's not what they're talking about. Because you know and I know that people can go to work in the night. Right? People can work in the night. We've got night shift. So it's not that night that the scripture is referring to. You know, um, it's, it's the night when, when, when your mouth cannot speak a word, when, when your feet cannot make a sound. It's that night. It's that night when you lay down and they can put all their lamps on and you cannot wake up. It's that night he's talking about. It's not the night where we work and, you know, and, and no, the people go to work. So it's not that night. So here Jesus is saying, it is, I'm going to do the work of him who sent me while it is day. Because one thing we have to understand that is that as long as there is a day, there's going to be a night. Amen. As long as there is a day, there is definitely going to be a night. There's going to be a night. And, and so when we have that understanding, then the urgency of doing the assignment, the work that we have to do, becomes a reality. Amen. The urgency becomes a reality. Do the work of being who sent me. Wow. It's, now, now, you see, when you look at the text, when you read the text, you can understand that Jesus, no doubt, understood his assignment. Yeah. Okay? He understood his assignment. He says, I will do the work of him who sent me while it is day. He, he attaches urgency and seriousness to the task. He attaches urgency and seriousness to the responsibility. You know, that I didn't come here on my own. I was sent. And I, I didn't come to do my own thing. I, I was sent with a specific uh, instruction to do something. So I'm going to do the work of him who sent me. Not my own work, but his work. Amen. Amen. His work. And, and then the Bible says that in, in, the book of, in the book of Matthew, the Bible says Jesus <clears throat> went to John the Baptist to be baptized by John. You know, and 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 and, and then John and, and Jesus had a little, you know, discussion. And John said, "No, no, no. You supposed to baptize me, not me." Jesus said, "No, no, no. Don't, don't, don't go there. You know, um, I, I, my my purpose is to to fulfill Scripture. Scripture has to be fulfilled. So it's not the way you see it; it's the way Scripture has designed it to be. So, so you go and baptize me, and finally, the Bible says John gets convinced and he baptizes Jesus. And the Bible says immediately um, after he baptized Jesus, and he had him open a dove came, you know, and sat on his shoulder, and, and there was a voice from heaven that said, "This is my beloved Son, in whom I'm well pleased." Mm -hmm. And then the Bible says immediately after that, that the Holy Spirit took charge of him and took him to the wilderness. Mm -hmm. Now, you see, I often say that people who don't understand the process, that they, they always are the one who become problematic. Now, watch this. Jesus did not come from the Jordan to the pulpit. You got to understand the process to the assignment. He didn't come from the Jordan to the pulpit. He came from the Jordan to the wilderness. My question to every believer, every man and woman of God who stands to preach and teach the word of God, my question is, have you been to the wilderness? A lot of people who become problematic are people who have never gone to the wilderness. Jesus didn't come from the, from the Jordan straight to the pulpit. He had to go to the wilderness. Now, what is the essence of the wilderness? The wilderness is the place where you, where, 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 where everything that is not of God has to be dealt with. Sure. The flesh has to be crucified, and, and your pride and everything about you has to be dealt with in the wilderness. You know, the wilderness is a place where it's, it's not a place of luxury. Mm -hmm. 
Lord. Wilderness is not a place where you know you enjoy yourself. It's not a place of luxury. You might be, you might take some time trying to find water, and by the grace of God, you might find an oasis and find a little bit of water. So, so the, 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 the wilderness is not a pleasant place. But what you see is a place that you need to go in order to get where you want to get. Amen. And so Jesus had to go to the wilderness. And he stayed there. He had to deal with. Now remember, he was also a man. So the man salary had to be dealt with. And that's why he had to go to the wilderness. And, and then the Bible says Jesus goes to the wilderness and he stays there for 40 days and 40 nights. Yeah. And, and, and after the 40 days and 40 nights, the Bible says Jesus is about to come out. And, and, and just in that time, the, 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 the enemy comes to him and, and comes to tempt him. If you were if you, if you, if you smart enough and if you were discerning enough, you will understand that the enemy has no new tricks. The enemy doesn't have no new tricks. There's a simple tricks. You, you understand that, that, that he used the full content to deceive the first Adam. Yeah. And so he comes to the second Adam with the same food content. Mm. But but this time around, he's not actually dealing with food. This this time around, he comes with an identity issue. You see, a, a lot of people will preach that, you know, when the Bible when the, the devil came to Jesus and he said, the Bible says that many people will say that he knew that Jesus was hungry, so he said it, he said, take these stones into bread. But watch the trickery of the enemy. He was not concerned about food. Because if you read the text carefully, he didn't say if you are hungry, turn these stones into bread. He said, you are the son of God. Now mind you, the, in other words, he said to Jesus, 40, uh, 40 days ago, when John baptized you, I heard a voice saying that you are the son of God. Uh -huh. Do you know you are your son, that you are the son of God? If you are the son of God, he didn't say if you are hungry. Uh -huh. So in other words, he was saying to Jesus, if you know who you are. Yeah. It was an identity issue. And of course, Jesus dealt with it. And, and, and I like the way Jesus approached it. You know, listen, don't, don't try to impress people. You, 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 got, you got nothing to prove to anybody. You got nothing to prove to anybody. I, I, I was watching a video and somebody said to a man of God, if you are a man of God, prove it. And then the man of God, I don't know, he said, and he started prophesying, you got the brown wallet, you got a brown purse. In that brown purse, you got X, X amount of money. In that money, X, I mean, I mean, are you serious? Seriously? Do I have to prove to somebody that I'm a man of God? So that you know that something is not right. Read that, then you know that something is not right. Jesus didn't have to prove to him. Jesus knew that he was the son of God. He didn't need to prove to the devil that he was the son of God. He knew his identity. So most times when the enemy confronts you, the, the enemy does not confront you with a particular thing that he is confronting you on. He's actually confronting you about your identity. Yeah. Do you know who you are? Yeah. Do you know whose you are? Yeah. And, and so the Bible says Jesus, Jesus dealt, dealt, with, the, he dealt with the devil, the, the enemy, and then just then he comes into the, into, the, into, the, into the temple, into the synagogue, and then he quotes the book of Isaiah. He quotes the book of, the book of Isaiah. Now remember he said, I'm going to do the work of him who sent me. Why it is day. And now he comes from the training process. He comes from the training, from the wilderness, before he comes to the pulpit. And now he stands to the pulpit. And he quotes, he quotes Isaiah. He says, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Mm. Not just so I can carry titles. Wow. <laughs> The Spirit of God doesn't come on me just so I can grow shoulders and grow wings. He said, no, no, no. He said, the Spirit of, Lord, of the Lord is upon me and it's for a purpose. Yeah. He said, he has anointed me, number one, to preach the gospel. What is the gospel? The good news. The Spirit of, the Holy Spirit doesn't come upon you just so you can jack, yo, 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 yo. No, no, no. It's for a purpose. It's not just so that everybody can call you a, a mighty man of God. It's for a purpose. So Jesus says he's anointed me to preach the gospel, the good news to the poor. If you read the book of Matthew chapter 5 in the Beatitudes, Jesus talked about the poor. He said, blessed are the poor in spirit. Amen. You see, 
they have sent me to heal the broken heart. Yeah. Not to raise as much offerings as I can. Not to host revival for 31 days just to raise offering. Not to call 31 day fast and pray and every day give out any love so people can keep bringing money. That's not the essence. So to heal the broken heart. Amen. And to preach deliverance to those who are in captivity. Yeah. To preach deliverance to those who are in captivity. There are people who are blind among us spiritually. And the power of the gospel will bring sight to them. The power of the gospel will bring sight to them. The recovery of sight to those that are blind, that is the essence of the gospel. He said to set a liberty in them that are bruised. Yes. How can you still be preaching this gospel when there are people bruised? Yeah. They come every day, they go every day, they hear bruised. He said, and to preach the acceptable of the this acceptable year of the Lord. You know what I love about the text? The Bible says right after that, he concluded. He said, this scripture has been fulfilled. Yeah. Now. In other words, Isaiah was quoting, and he was talking about me. Now I'm quoting the very word that Isaiah said about me. Yeah. And I just tell you now that it was about me. Mm-hmm. And I'm here now. And this scripture has been fulfilled. Amen? Mm-hmm. This scripture has been fulfilled. And then in the book of Mark 16, 15 to 20, Jesus again, he gives a wicked call on an instruction to show us and let us know what our responsibility, what our divine assignment is all about. He said, go ye therefore into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not and shall be condemned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. These signs shall follow them that believe. So people who are following the signs, they are not believers. People who are following the signs, they are not believers. Because the scripture says it's the sign that does the following, not the people. The signs will follow you because you believe. Oh, yeah. So if you are following the sign, then you don't believe. No, it's not. Sure. Yeah. And it says if you believe, the signs will follow you. Yeah. Yes. And as the signs follow you, he said, then in my name, not in the name of the bishop, not in the name of the prophet. In my, because sometimes I, I listen to some, some people arrogantly. They say, you know, if somebody was sick and they brought it to my church and I healed them. I healed them. But Jesus said, because you believe the signs will follow. And as the signs follow you, he said that in my name, ah. you shall cast out devils. That's why most times I hear people say, this man is a powerful man of God. I'm still trying to wrap around, wrap my neck around the powerful man of God. Sometimes they say he's a powerful man of prayer, powerful woman of prayer. And I'm still trying to wrap my neck around that. Because the text says, if you believe, the signs will follow you. Amen. And because the signs are following you, in my name, you will cast out. You will speak with new tongues. 
you shall take up serpents, snakes. And if you drink deadly thing, it will not harm you. What? Because you believe. Because you believe. Not because you are smart. Not because you 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 are a uh, certified theologian. Because you believe. He said you, you will drink deadly things that will not harm you because you believe. You will lay hands on the sick, they will recover. Not because you're powerful, but because you believe. Amen. Amen. Because you believe. Listen to the sick and they will recover. That's what I said to you last time. If you believe, listen. Pray for your family members. Yeah. If you go to the home and somebody sick, lay here on them. Yeah. If you went to the hospital and visit somebody, you pray with them, the rest of the people there, Pass around layers on them. Amen. If you believe. Amen. Amen. I'm not saying if you are powerful, I say if you believe. Amen. Oh yes. I'm not saying if you are a theologian or you know the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, I'm saying if you believe. Amen. Because what does the job is not your powerfulness, so to speak, or a God. It's your belief. And as you do that, you do that in his name, Amen. not in your name. Amen. Amen. The Bible says after he spoke that, he was taken to heaven. Yeah. And he sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth. And they went forth. And they went forth. The disciples went forth. Yeah. The people who were speaking, the folks that he was speaking to, the Bible said, and they went forth. It is the and they sat down and they went forth. forth. The reason why I teach you and we teach you, you know, is so that you can go forth, forth. not so that you can sit down, so I that you can go forth. forth. So that as you believe, you go forth. Amen. You'll be able to reach out to everybody because that is your divine assignment. Amen. 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 The Bible said they went forth. And preach everywhere. And preach everywhere. And the Lord working with them. And confirming the word with signs. Oh my goodness. Oh. The Bible says, after Jesus left, the Bible says, and they went forth. In obedience, they went forth. Yeah. In belief, they went forth. And because they believed and they took a step of obedience, listen, the Bible said whatever they were doing, the Bible didn't say they were working by the Son, the Bible said the Lord working with them. Yes. When you go forth in obedience to the word, God work with you. Amen. 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 When you go forth in obedience, God work with you. You know, when I grew up as a young minister, and when I had the opportunity to go pray for people, uh, the fear was what if they don't get healed? And then one day the Lord rebuke me, says, not your responsibility. The only instruction is lay hand on the sick. Yeah. So so I just lay hands and say, Father, Father, thank you. Your words have to, and I remind that the God said, remind me of my word. Yeah. Put me in remembrance. I said, Lord, I thank you. Your words which you lay hands on the sick, yeah. and they will recover. How they recover, when they recover, where they recover, none of my business. Mine is to do what you say. Lay hands on the sick. And so sometimes when somebody can say, oh, pastor, thank you. You know, my, my brother is okay, my sister is okay. You know the way I say, my, this one, you don't even understand, I didn't do anything. Mm -hmm. I just lay there. Yes. I just obey. I, I was on an instruction. Yeah. Every time you obey instruction, the one who gives you the instruction works with you. Amen. Amen. Every time you obey my instruction, the one who gives you the instruction, he works with you. Yeah. That's why God said, do this. He put his hand on top of your hands. Yeah. The minute you stretch your head in obedience, God's hands go on top of oh, your hands. Amen. He guides you. He directs you. Yeah. Amen. Amen. He directs you. This is our divine assignment. Listen, 
A lot of people think, you know, I get saved, you know, so I can, when I die, I go to heaven. No, God didn't, God didn't save you just for that. And the question is, have you asked yourself, why am I saved? Have you asked yourself, why am I saved? Okay, ask yourself now. Then ask yourself, say, why am I saved? So can you look at me? Ask yourself, say, why am I saved? <laughs> Amen? Amen? Because we need to ask yourself, why am I saved? Now, until you know why you are saved or why you are saved, you will not know what to do. Yeah. That's why a lot of people find themselves in the church, they've been there too long, and they don't know why they were saved, and they wouldn't become a problem. Because they don't know why they were saved. They don't see nothing positive. Everything they see is negative. Yeah. Because they don't know what they were saying. Yeah. Do you know why you were saved? Have you ever wondered why was I saved? Why did I become a Christian? Have you asked yourself what is God's intent? Why did God lay his hand on me and save me? I was doing my things, you know, and just running heads together. Let me anyhow. But then he laid his hand on me. Why did God do that? Why has Christ become my life? Because until you understand the why, you will not even know what you're supposed to be doing. So that's why we got people who are believers, but they are only Sunday believers. They only come to church on Sunday. They only come to church on Sunday. They've never ever witnessed to anybody. They've been Christian all of their life, but there's not one soul they can point to that have brought this soul to Christ. Not one person they pointed to say, I witnessed to this person that got saved. And many times, believers, even now, we know what we know or think is that Christ, that Jesus wants to live in us. That's true, he wants to live in us. But, 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 but that is not the end of it. The vision and the purpose of Christ living in you is deeper than what you think. Amen. It's deeper than what you think. In Luke chapter 10, verse 19, it says, For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. The Son of Man has come to save that which was lost. So Christ living in you is not just so that you can speak in tongue and be satisfied. Mm -hmm. You greet people in tongue. Your friend say hello, he say, Rabbi Shakata. <laughs> hey, brother, how you doing? No, 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 no. That's not, that's not, that's not why he lives in you. Say, brother, you know, um, the food is ready. Hey, brother, we came to eat. Man, braka, shika, yata. When I you will be doing all that stuff, I will cut enough, eat, and I will go. Because that, that's not what the Holy Spirit, that's not what God wants to Christ wants to live in us. No. No. Luke 19 10 tells us that his desire is to save that which was lost. That is why he commissioned us. He said, Go ye therefore. That is, a, that is a divine assignment. Every person who calls himself a believer, a follower of Christ, that is the divine assignment. Who have you witnessed to? Who have you brought to the Lord? You got friends, workmates, schoolmates, classmates, neighbors who are not saved. Who have you brought to the Lord? Or sometimes we just satisfy being a believer. I'm a Christian. In John chapter 4, verse 35, Jesus was saying to them, He says, Do you not say that there are still four months and then comes the harvest? He said, Don't you say there are four months and after the four months the harvest will come? He said, But before I say to you, lift up your eyes and look at the fields. For they are already white 
for the harvest. That is our assignment. If the Spirit of God, the God of Christ, comes to lift you by His Spirit, it is because of that. Yeah. Christ living in us is not so we prove, prove how spiritual we are. Mm -hmm. It's to do the work that He's called us to do. Mm -hmm. And Jesus made it clear in Luke four eighteen. He said, "The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me." Yeah. Not just I can be passing around. You know, I'm the Son of God. You don't know I got power. I'm the Son of God. He says, so that I can preach the gospel. The people who are, who are in captivity, to set them free. The people who are blind, to bring recovery of sight to them. It's a purpose. The harvest is rare. Yes. Sometimes we think that the church membership is just going to be by supernatural means. There are some people who are walking to church. Yeah. We know that for sure. But the vast majority, the vast responsibility to the rest of us yeah. to go out. And the reason why you know Christ is so that you can make him know. Wow. Yeah. That's, why I, that's why I wonder people who say they love God. How strong is your love relationship? I know the first time my son Abraham hit South Africa. I know my baby couldn't stop calling everybody. He's here, come and see him. And I like. <laughs> my baby is normal. It's normal. That's what love is all about. It's normal. You want everybody to see the thing you love. Even if it's a new car you bought. You want everybody to come to see. That's what love is all about. You want everybody to know about him or know about her. And we say we love this God. But yet we hardly say anything about it. Good news is hard to keep. Amen. Good news is like a jelly. You hold a jelly in your hand, trying to squeeze it, you pass all through your fingers. That's what good news is. It's like a jelly. That's what Jesus said. He said the Spirit of the Lord is upon me to preach this good news. Amen. I can keep it. It's burning in my bones. How many times you stand in a queue in a bank or in a shop and there's a brother and a sister in front of you and there's a fire burning in inside of you to say something to them? I know not naturally when we find relationships we want everybody to come and see. You, you may come and see. No, I, I know God lost me, man. God has just given me. Oh, come and see my friend. Oh, this this lady. Oh, she's so come and see. Are you coming to get married? Yeah, come and see my woman. I'm going to get married to. You want everybody to see her. How strong is this love relationship that we have for this God? That we keep quiet, mm -hmm. and the son and mother will come. I love you, Lord. Are you amazing? Never feels. But on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, you keep quiet. I'm like, God is saying, what kind of love is this? What kind of love that, 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 that doesn't even talk about me? What kind of love is this? That you are so quiet about. How deep and how strong is this love that this love of mine is so quiet? Like I said the other day, there are some people who want to serve, who want God to be a full-time God to them. Yeah. But they want to serve him part-time. Part -time. How can you expect God to be a full-time God to you? Mm. And you be a part, you serve him part-time. When you feel like, when you want to, you come to church when you feel like, you read the word when you feel like, you go to Bible study when you feel like, you go for prayer meeting when you feel like. But every little thing you wrote, oh God, oh God, you want him to be a full-time God. But you want to serve him on a part-time left, on a part-time basis. On this divine assignment, you have to have a vision to evangelize. Have a vision to evangelize. 
And he prays, the Lord, give me a vision to evangelize. Give me a vision to reach. That's what Jesus said. He said, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. He has anointed me. I'm not going to pass by anybody without telling them about Christ. And I said to you, this is by assignment. Listen, he, doesn't, he didn't ask for qualification. He's not asking for CV. Do you have a bachelor degree in theology? No, 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 no. Do you have a certificate in theology? No, 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 no. He said, only believe. He said, only believe. He said, when you believe, then use my name. Yeah. <laughs> he said, only believe. When you believe, use my name. In my name, say to the devil, out. In my name, say to the sickness, out. In my name, say to the situation, out. He's not asking you for qualification. He's not asking you to go to school and, you know, go learn theology in four weeks, four years or so and come back. Only believe. And the question is, how long does it take to believe? How long does it take to believe? You must have a vision. As you have a vision to evangelize, you must have a vision for the work. The vision of the work in Matthew, in Matthew chapter, chapter 9, verse 37 to 38. Somebody that can read it quickly for us. Matthew 9, 37 to 38. You must have a vision of the work. I know it's not this, I know this is not one of the messages that we you know we start to scream. Yeah. But that's okay. I like surgical messages. I like the one where you know the doctors and you know Tandaya will put you to sleep and you know and while you in sleep they're doing all the work. It's fine. When you get up, you'll be okay. You know, when you wake up from the anesthesia, when the anesthesia fades away, you'll be okay. Yeah. You know, so I'm, I'm not I'm not like I don't I'm not an entertainer. I don't I don't like people shouting. I, I like you know find something that you can go and ponder upon. Amen. 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 You must have a vision of the word. Somebody in Matthew 9, 37, 38. Yeah. yeah. Read if you're there. Matthew 9? Yeah. Chapter 9, verses, verses 37 to yeah. 8. Right. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest truly is plentiful, mm -hmm. but the laborers are few. Mm -hmm. 38 says, Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Uh -huh. Have a yeah. vision of the work. See what needs to be done. Have a vision of the work. Are you satisfied when you come to church and there are still seats empty in front of you or empty behind you? It speaks to us that there are people out there who are supposed to get saved. Yeah. And God is depending on us to reach out to them. Yeah. Have a vision of the work. But also, you must have a vision as you have a vision of the work. Also have a vision of sinners and of hell. Know that hell is a reality. Have a vision of somebody burning in, in, in fire forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Have a vision. Have a vision of sinners that this one, if he or she die without Christ, they are lost forever. Have a vision of hell. You read Psalm, 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 Psalm 9, verse 17, 17, Proverbs 27, 20. Again, we can look, read Luke 16, 19 to 31. Psalm 9, 17, Proverbs 27, 20, and Luke 16, 19 to 31. Somebody can read one of them, Psalm 9, 17, or Proverbs 27, 20. Psalm 9, 17. Amen. The wicked return to the veil. All the nations that forget God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So think about hell. Hell is a reality. Think about sinners. That without Christ, they are doomed forever. So then I submit to you the primary reason why you were saved is not so you can carry a title Christian. Primary 
reason why, primary reason why you were saved, so you can carry a title, bishop, apostle, or prophet, or whatever. The primary reason why you were saved is to make Christ known. Amen. Amen. The primary reason why you were saved is to make Christ known. Amen. So all the titles and all the things we take about ourselves, they are inconsequential. It's to make him known. Are you fulfilling that divine assignment? Our primary assignment, your primary assignment as a believer is to bring those who are far from God, bring them closer to oh, God. Amen. Oh, amen. Oh, amen. You don't need any educational degree to do that. The woman that Jesus encountered at the well, hey. she was she didn't have any oh. degree in theology. In fact, she was far from being a believer. She was living her own kind of life. And then Jesus spoke to her. Immediately, she understood the divine assignment. Without even being taught, she ran to town. Without quoting scripture, without quoting Bible verse, without prophesying, she just spoke a simple word. Come and see. Yeah. Hallelujah. Come and see. And then the people said, well, we know this woman. She called you also, come and see why. Mm. Say, come and see a man who has told me that. Some of them may have known her story, but for a strange man to have told her everything that she's done, this man must not be, that man definitely is not an ordinary person. <laughs> so the whole town went running. And then they confirmed, they said to her, we believe not only because of what you said, we've seen ourselves. So some of the way you can execute a divine assignment, just invite somebody to church. So sister, can you visit me at my church? And I know the bigger reason, the bigger excuse they will give you, and some of them might not be true, but they will tell you, oh, when I have my church, <laughs> every, listen, everybody, everybody in every, especially in my country, Liberia, if they're not Muslim, then they are Christians. That's what we know. If you're not Muslim, you're Christian. So everybody will tell you they have a church. They might not even be going to church, or they want to go to church um, Easter Sunday, first Sunday of the year. Matter of their book close. But yet they tell you they have a church. But then you tell them, no, no, no. I'm not saying leave your church. Just come and listen. It's just like you're taking a person who used to a, specific, a particular kind of restaurant. And you tell them, Ish, man, let's try this other restaurant. And they say, no, this one, the food is nice. I got my, I got my restaurant that I can go. So no, I didn't say leave your restaurant. They just try mine. Try when I go there, and the person eats, he says, sister, tell me, I think I'll have to be coming here. Even if you're not in town, I'll come here. Why? Because the food that they met, they met up with was more delicious. The food they met up with was more nutritional was more appealing and tasty than what they did. I know that people who we invite to church and they remain because of what they hear. Yeah. Because of what they receive. Yeah. So part of your divine assignment doesn't come for a degree. No. Let me tell you this. Your primary assignment is to bring people who are far from Christ closer to Him. Yeah. But also, you must go where they have been held captive and bring them back to God. Mm -hmm. Go where they've been held captive and bring them back to God. Yeah. But I understand what Jesus said now. He says, if you believe in my name, so when you go there, you're not going in your name. You're not bringing them in your name. Your name has no power. Amen. Some of our names are bent. Ordinary banks are not even on our needs. Even tax shops, ordinary tax shops, can't even on our name. They say, oh, excuse me, my friend. Um, Mr. Susan, please give me one, one breath. 
15 red bread, 15 red packet of bread. They will ask, Who is he? I don't know that man. Give me a tax shop. Some of our names, a tax shop cannot give you one of our names. Your name has no power, it has nothing. So Jesus said, When you believe, and you use, he gave you permission, but the condition to using his name is to believe. When you believe, then you can go out, reach out to those who are in captivity, and bring them back. Amen. Amen. And bring them back. But listen to this. If you ever thought that church was a cruise ship, let me just tell you that church was never meant to be a cruise ship. You know what a cruise ship is, right? Yeah. You know what a cruise ship is. Yeah. Church was never meant to be a cruise ship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's never meant to be a cruise ship. And just in case you forget, remember what Jesus said to Peter. He said, I will build my church. I will build my church. And the gates. That doesn't sound like a cruise ship. Right? No, that doesn't sound like a cruise ship. I will build my church. And the gates. It shows that there's a fight. And cruise ship is not for fight. Cruise ship is where, you know, you, you enjoy yourself. The year is coming to an end. You got small money. You say, hey, sweetheart, let's go on a cruise. You just yeah. cruise there. Yeah. No way. But when they say fight, not a cruise ship. Ow. No. So I will build my church. Yeah. And the gates of hell okay. will not prevail. Will not so the assignment of the church yeah. is not cruising. It's confrontation. Yeah. The church is to confront the gates Amen. of hell. Amen. So remember that as a Christian, yes. you are not a cruise ship, you are a battleship. Oh my goodness. You are a battleship. You are a battleship. You are not a cruise ship. For you to serve and live in luxury. So remember Paul. Paul, Paul. Paul even made it clear. Paul told Timothy. He said as a good soldier. Fight the good fight of faith. Amen. He didn't say relax. Uh -huh. He said fight. Yeah. And then in second Timothy. He comes back to Timothy. He said I fought a good fight. No that's not right. a cruise ship. He said I fought a good fight. Yeah. Mm. So you and I as believers on this divine assignment mm. we are a battleship that is built to carry Jesus his love and his power to the gates of hell yeah. and bring back those who are far from God. Mm. That is our divine assignment. Mm. As a battleship you will build as believers, as believers, we are built as battleships to carry Jesus, carry his love, his power to the gates of hell and bring back those who have been held in captivity, who are far from God, bring them back to God. Listen to me, somebody. Our mission, your mission, is to be instruments instrument by and through whom Jesus can manifest his love and his power Amen. in order to deliver as many as possible from eternal damnation. Amen. That is your assignment. Amen. To be an instrument and be yourself. Jesus. And be yourself as instruments that he can use. So if we don't understand what our assignment is, we will not know what to do. But Jesus spelled it out. He made it clear. He said, I'm sending you go out into the world. Make disciples of all nations. And maybe you might think that call is for somebody who is a pastor, 
Somebody who is a bishop, somebody who is an apostle. No, 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 no. It's not so. It's for everyone who is a child of God. Everyone who is a believer. Hallelujah. Everyone who is a believer. Everyone who is a child of God. Go ye therefore. Make disciples. Sometimes we don't understand why some things don't work for us. Because we become a war soldiers. You know who an a war soldier is? The one who live without excuse. You go on a war. You on your own. And then you come Sunday morning. I love you, Lord. For your mercy never fills me all my days. And God's like, shoot. <laughs> yeah, God is just shaking his head. He says, shoot. This one loved me. The whole week, she didn't open her mouth. She didn't, he didn't open his mouth to talk about me. You know, there's a secular song that we used that they used to sing. The song used to say, daytime lovers and nighttime friends. Daytime friends and nighttime lovers. Yeah. In the day they are friends. In the night they are lovers. What a deception. What a hypocrisy. And sometimes that's how we treat God. He becomes our daytime friend, our night. When nobody else is there. I love you, Lord. But we never told that love to anybody. Twenty-five, twenty-six years ago, when I saw this damsel and this queen, everybody knew. Mm -hmm. I carried the message around. Mm -hmm. I found something. What have you found? Hey, I found diamonds. I was talking about this love. I was doing everything about this love. There was curfew in Liberia. The curfew was from, 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 from 7 to 6 the next morning. 7 p.m. to 6 a.m. She was living, she was living like, uh, like, like someone like Mami Lodi and I was living like, like 17. And I would be there up to 6.45. 6.25, I will be there. This love is powerful. Mm -hmm. Love can make you... Even when they are told, they tell you lions are here, <laughs> you will walk. But when it comes to God, our own demonstration of love is different. Mm -hmm. God becomes like daytime lovers and, and nighttime, daytime friends and nighttime lovers. Mm -hmm. We want to show God love in the night. In the day we don't. We want to come to God when we're in need. But yet, there's some the divine assignment that He's given to us. We're not fulfilling our part, but we try to squeeze God in to fulfill His part. And we think that by taking 30 days of fasting and praying, it will twist the hand of God. I submit to you where you are and your breakthrough. It's just a step of obedience. Amen. Amen. It's not 30 days of fasting and praying. Wow. It's just a step of obedience. Amen. You can chase as many prophets as you want to. Mm. But if you walk in disobedience to God and not fulfilling what He's expected you to fulfill, mm. you will navigate yourself and you'll find yourself in the same place. Mm. Amen. Amen. You find yourself in the same place. You've been chasing prophets. Now these days, church has become church has become a fundraising thing. If I want to travel now, I will say we are having a 32 day fast and prayer mm. and giving a powerful need of rooting satanic demonic. <laughs> Think that we're never rooted out before you are born. You want to root them out in your time. <laughs> And then everybody will come running. Because you want to uproot and deroot it. <laughs> we want to take Pretoria for Jesus. Your one church will take the whole city for Jesus. Yeah. How possible is that? Uh, so what will the other churches be doing? Uh, and then when the people come,
Prophecy. Yes, this early Lord that you are taking, make sure don't put less than 100 rand. From 100 rand up, he bring it tomorrow. They bring, we come back. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay, we're about to close the service. Who brought your envelope from last night? Come and take another one. <laughs> we are raising serious offering, serious funds. And then after the 31 days finish, <coughs> you see me in Cape Town on the beach. Enjoy the goodness of the Lord. Hallelujah. The church has become a place of hypocrisy. And people have become sick of it. Yes, because we all miss our divine assignment. Yes. We never come to understand why we were saved. Mm. And because we never come to understand why we were saved, we just dead. Do you know there are people who go to school, they never understood why they're in school? Yes. Uh, they never understand why they were in school. And so they join every gang, they join every group, they join everything. But they don't have a focus. They don't have a focus. My prayer for us is that we understand why we were saved. Amen. That we understand why we were saved. We understand our divine assignment. We will execute our divine assignment. Because on that day, He will ask you the question. Christmas is coming again. We'll sing the Christmas songs. But guess what? He's not coming back like a baby anymore. He's not coming like a baby anymore. He's coming back like a king to judge the living and the dead. How well have you carried on the assignment? Are you gonna be like the three, like the three servants? You won't give five talent, two talent, one talent. Yeah. You will say to God, I knew you were a hard God, so I didn't even bother to talk about you. And God would have said, well, why do you take my life? You have just told me I don't need your life. You can have it. Why did you allow my son to die for you when you know that you were not going to live for him? Why did you allow my son to go through humiliation for you when you knew that you were not going to live for him? He died for us so that we can live for him. Amen. And the way to live for him is to go out and bring those who have lost back to Church, this is our divine assignment. Amen. Every other thing we do in church is just our own things we are on. Every other thing is just our own thing. This is our divine assignment. This is the one sort of five assignment that God has given us. Go ye out into the world and make disciples. This is the one sort responsibility that is given to us. And when you understand that responsibility, you don't need to just signs and wonders. He said it will follow you. It will follow you. So you see yourself, you won't see yourself as being ordinary. You see yourself as being empowered. Because then, whatever you do, you do it in the name of God. Ah. Not in your own name. He said, in my name, you will slay hands, you will cast out people. Because you believe. Mm. Amen. Amen. Because you believe. I submit to you, church. This is my message for you today. Mm. Understand your divine assignment. Amen. Amen. If you set aside to come to church every day, every Sunday in Sunday out, for 10 months now, some of you live, you've been 10, you tell you something, you 12, you 13, you 14, you 15. Some of you, you 50, you 40. For those 40 years, you just set aside coming to church and not even inviting somebody. Maybe you forgot. My assignment is to remind you this morning yeah. that you have a divine assignment Hallelujah. to go ye out into the world. Mm -hmm. To talk about this love that you have. Mm -hmm. This one you say you're so much in love with. Mm -hmm. To talk about him and bring as many as possible to him. Step to your feet. Mm -hmm. I love you, Lord. For your mercy, Lord.